Howdy guys, I hope you're having a good summer. Let's start with our summer homework part one. Uh, so when we're recording pre precise data, uh, remember we're, when we use analog instruments, I will teach you later how to use them. Look at uncertainty, but right now we're only looking at how long this little box, gray box is. So uh, remember that uh, you'll just have to basically make your own best judgment. So it's going to be right about here. So um, I am going to guess that that's 31. Okay, later on you'll learn that you'll do 31 plus or minus 1 or 31 plus or minus 2. Don't worry about those um, uncertainties at the moment. Uh, here, if with this one right here, what you are going to look at is you are going to look at this one. Let's see, it's let's say it's exactly right on 31 again. But we're not going to call it 31. We're going to call it 31.0. That's because we're going to approximate one more digit than the instrument gives us. The instrument was give, this instrument was giving us one um, increment. Each increment was worth one. So we're going to give one digit past that. Each increment here was worth five. So we're going to give one digit past that five, which is going to be, uh, that's probably the best approximation. Uh, th this one's a little tricky. They wouldn't ask you something like that. This will show up on the test, some kind of thing like that. So uh, now let's get to sig figs. Now you can read the rules for this, but when I uh, do these, I just kind of make sure I always look for the decimal. That is going to be always be your key. So I'll kind of give you Mr. Russell's rules here. If a decimal is present, after the first significant digit, everything else is significant. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six. Six significant digits or sig figs or sig digs. Now, a decimal is present. So the first significant figure every, after everything else. So all these leading zeros right here are not significant. Leading zeros are never significant. So this one is four. This one has four. Uh, this one has two. Because there's no decimal. So we're just going to only count those two. This one has six. This one has two. And this one has two. We only count what is ever in the coefficient right here. This times 10 to the whatever, doesn't matter. It's only this coefficient right here. All right, now we move round sig figs. We're looking at the rounding. We want to round each number to the uh, only three sig figs. So we're going to look at take the first three. This last one is our rounding digit. That's a six, so we're going to round up. So we're going to do 2.68. We're going to take the first three digits here, and then we're going to round this zero. Well, zero stays zero. So these are all still placeholders. We can't just cut them off, right? So it's still going to be 4 million. But to say that those are significant, we're going to use that. Uh, we could also say this and do that. Or you can put it in scientific notation. To get around that times 10 to the 6 okay 4.00 times 10 to the 6 uh, then you can do the first three right here and there's a circle uh, so that's our rounding digit nine rounds up so it's gonna be 1.09 and then our first three here three rounds down so it's gonna be 0 0.00012 zero. Again, you can put it in scientific notation. To, uh, one, two, three, four. So 10 to the minus four. Okay. Now, uh, these calculations with six figs, um, I want to make sure that you guys always watch your units. All right. When you all do this. So, um, we need meters plus meters plus meters. Uh, that's the unit is last unit is going to be meters. So if I add all those together, 
Um, the calculator is actually going to give me 54.148. Now, we are adding, so we're going to use the fewest number of decimal places. So the fewest number of decimal places is three. So we're going to use three decimal places. Well, that's exactly what our calculator gives us, so that's convenient. Now, if we do 66.99, divided by 22.33, we get three. Well, uh, people will put three and call it a day. That's uh, gonna be minus one point. Um, so you're gonna end up getting, uh, you should do 3.000. That makes sure that you keep all your sick pics. So that's gonna be moles per decimeter cube, also known as moles per liter, or, or you can write it as moles per decimeter cube, or you can write it as molar, right? Those are different units that come up. So uh, 3.69 times 2.45. That gives us 9.0405. We'll approximate that to 9.04. And uh, that's going to be kilograms times meter times second times inverse second squared, also known as a Newton. Uh, now, here's an interesting one. We have 336 grams times 2. Now, 2 is kind of what we would call a scalar because there's no unit on here. We're just doing times 2. So um, I don't think this 2 is going to have sig figs. It doesn't have units on it, so that's why I think that. Um, I'm kind of thinking that this is what we call a scalar. Uh, if you've taken physics, maybe you may have heard of that. So this is where things get a little weird. It should be two seven. Uh, I mean, six seventy two grams. Um, if you wrote seven hundred grams, um, I think the IB would still take that. Uh, they there's not a, that big of an issue. They don't really care that much in this example. Like in this example. So, um, in this one, we'll do this times this. So that's going to be, the calculator gives us 1.848 times 10 to the minus 8. We'll just approximate that to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms per decimeter cube. Uh, no, kilograms times decimeter cube. And then we have this right here, this times this. So we're going to get 9,000. With two sig figs, there's two sig figs here, two sig figs here, and that's going to be meters per second cube. Notice how I'm using the least number of sig figs. Yeah. And we have three sig figs here and three sig figs here, so our answer has three. So we type it in the calculator, and our calculator gives us this. Let's approximate that to 0 0.180 joules per gram, uh, sorry, joules per degree Celsius, inverse degree Celsius. And now this big one. If you see right here, we have to apply a little order of operations, right? Because we have our parentheses here, we have some multiplication on the inside, then we'll do some subtraction, and then we also will divide by a term. So we're going to, let's make sure we follow our order of operations. Let's do Inside the parentheses, let's do the multiplication first. So we'll end up with this. And I am not going to round anything at all. Not until I get to the very end. And this is where I want to caution you guys. I want you all to not round if you get to something like this until you get to the very end. So we get to this minus this, which will give us 138.2. Divided by 1.56 times 10 to the minus 4. And then we'll get a big long number, 
this divided by this is not a very nice number. That's what your calculator gives you. And then we'll go back. So if we're doing multiplication, we'll use the least number of sig figs. So there's three here, there's three here, and there's three here. But if we're doing subtraction, we're gonna use the least number of decimal places. So that would be that. We should not use, just cut off all the decimals. So this is where you come into some kind of problem. Um, and this is where you wanna use your best judgment. Uh, we could consider this, we could kind of exclude this, and let's just try to do three sig figs here. If you just did this, I feel like um, IB would be okay with it. I'd be okay with it. So IB, I think, would be okay with it. All right. Um, and you, when you reach something like that, just always just use your best judgment. All right, that's it. Uh, take care of assignment one and you should be good to go.